Ladies and gentlemen, Hi. we're here with a podcast called No Antidote Needed, with no script either. We have our guest today, Jackson, Jack, Capital, Harry Styles 2.0, <laughs> the secret member of Motley Crue, multiple names, and here we are. Hello. This is so painful, man. I can't. <laughs> What's going on, dude? What's up, man? So, ladies and gentlemen, most podcasts, I feel, have too much of an itinerary. So, with no antidote needed, this is episode one. But we're going to be doing it to where, like, literally, we just have a conversation, record whatever's on there, and just post it no matter what, just to keep it transparent, keep it real, keep it raw. So, what was your last purchase and why? My last purchase and why? Oh, uh, phone's great. I'd get that. Ah, oh, true. I had like so you know like the past i've had the most ghetto phones always ever. like samsung i had a samsung my freshman year and oh my god it was terrible i switched to like a 6s and the battery was just garbo like it would drain like i'd be in first period and i'd use it for like 10 minutes and it would go from like 80 to like 40 <laughs> like okay apple and then i switched to a phone that had no mic so it didn't record sound at all Recorded video it was fine, the battery was cool, it was just no sound. Mm. Uh, then I switched to this one, screen was cracked, and then I got that replaced, but then I figured out the battery on this one sucks. Uh, That's yeah. whack. Yeah, boy with terrible phones out here. He can't escape a bad phone. Like, I feel like, dude, I feel like when you upgrade, you're literally going to get, like, the jankiest phone still. Like, yeah. Apple's going to send you a defect, and then you're going to be like, can I get it replaced for free? They're like, no. No. They're going to send me one with, like, a dead pixel on it or something. It's like, I can't escape it. What do you think the next iPhone's gonna have that's like exponentially different? Oh, dude. Uh, I think it's gonna have like, have you been seeing like those leaked videos or like leaked photos of like the triple camera? Yes. On it? The square on the back? Yes. Why are we adding more cameras to I, phones? I don't understand it. Like, it's cool that we can like put that power into like a tiny little phone, but like, why? <laughs> it's true. It's no, because like, like, I don't know what more you can do with a photo. Because you already have two cameras taking two pictures and syncing it. Yeah. So, like, with three or four, however, 16 and probably 20, 20 like... For real. Is it going to be 4D? Like... I don't know. Maybe it'll be able to take 3D photos. That'd be pretty rad. I hope so. I upgraded to iOS 13 as soon as I put this one in Gosh, possession. Because it's so good. It's clean. I love yes. dark mode. Dude. Dark mode goes so hard. And, yeah. Like, I went back to light mode for, like... A minute, I was like. Yeah. My favorite thing is the um, the lyrics on dark mode. Yes. Because it makes like the album artwork, the color scheme. Yes. It's perfect. It's beautiful. Apple knows what they're doing. They do. I use light mode on Twitter though because because I can. Light It'd mode hurts. I don't understand why people do dark mode. Nah, bro. Dark mode hurts my eyes. It's like the dark mode on iOS is good. It's fire. Yeah. But dark mode on Twitter. I think maybe because, like, with the iOS 13, there's more of a neon feel. Yeah. So, like, with... Like, all the colors are brighter, and they're kind of all there. Yeah. So, it's like... Right. It's all there. So, what you got going on next, uh... Next... Okay, not next month is in next month, but, like, this month. So, it's, like, the rest of it. Okay. Uh, so... Tatooine is coming up very soon. It's in December, and it is August. September. Holy crap, time is flying. I know. 2018. And... I have worked on about, like, 4% of the album in a good way, though, because, like, I want to live these experiences and put them down. Like, I have a journal that I write my experiences down in, and I want to get them all there and then take, like, the words that I wrote down and put them into lyrics. Okay. And I feel like I'm going to start doing that towards the end of this month, and then after I do that, then I'm going to start making all the beats and then kind of producing it more on my own as well. I scrapped all of like the beats and stuff that I had originally like I scrapped the YouTube beats and stuff because I want to put it on Apple Music and I can't really get the rights for it yeah true so yeah and I want to be all original want to make my own stuff so you're making your own beats this time yes let's go so it's gonna be cool cause then like it's like with YouTube it's like I can't really find the vibe the specific vibe that I'm looking for and then it's like if I go you know if I make it myself then I can capture the vibe that I actually want in to the music that's true so it just kind of helps, and then... 
Well, because I guess you're you're plucking inspiration, but you're not copying off of them. Yeah. So it's like you're like okay, so like let's say like you like for example like you love the Stranger Things vibe, so you're like all right, I need like an eighty synth vibe. Mm-hmm. You're like, yeah, you're like I'm not gonna just like pluck that song and then rap over it. I'm gonna like take maybe samples from it. Yeah. Make it in a kit and then just use it. For real, and that's that's smart. Kind of what I'm gonna do, and like. The, the thing I'm really scared for is putting myself back in those, like, dark mindsets just to write the lyrics. Like, I'm not actually going to go back and actually go back to my phase. Of, nah, bro. Yeah, no, I'm just going to kind of, like, put myself in those mentalities. Like, this summer was a, like, complete battle, like, with myself just mentally. Um, going through, like, all the breakup stuff and like that. It was just kind of, it was really hard for me to, mm-hmm. like, kind of get through that by myself and, like, go all that and just kind of, like the state of mind that I was in was just a very dark state of mind and there's just so much like emotion there. This album is very, I don't know how to say it, like very opening and it's like me opening up. Like vulnerable? So, yeah. I'm okay. very, yes, that's the word. Yes. Gotcha. Vulnerable. It's a very vulnerable album. And okay. Everything is just kind of being poured out into my lyrics and there are going to be sad songs, there are going to be hype songs, there's going to be kind of mellow songs. But it's going to be all one big bundle of sadness, coolness, and vibiness. So, but yeah, and it's... Did you listen to uh, NF's last, last album, The Search? Yeah. It's kind of got that same, like, waviness mm-hmm. of, like, feelings. Because, like, there, I would say there's, like, roughly, like, five tracks that are, like, super depressing. Mm-hmm. And then there's, like, the ones that you want to work out with. And then there's like the middleman or the yeah. middlemen. It's kind of like the and it's weird vibey tracks. I yeah. am doing more rock and roll stuff though. Oh heck yeah! I okay. am adding like heavy like rock aspect. Like uh, now, just kids or your friends playing stuff too? Oh, my friends playing stuff. Heck yeah! I want to get my friend Devin to play like guitar for me and stuff. And Luke, obviously, shout out to Luke, my drummer, <laughs> legend, the boy. Yeah, and dude, the show on the sixth is gonna be. It's gonna be nice. Crazy. <laughs> but shout out to Rain and Drew with. But I gave Luke like a small window to do whatever he wanted. And he was like, because I gave him, I was originally, I was like, it's a drum solo and you can do whatever you want. He was like, I kind of want to do like a cover on stage. Mm. I was like, okay, that sounds good. And we're going to get our friend Cooper, not Booper, but Cooper. His name's Cooper Heaton. And yeah. we're going to try, we're going to get him on stage and it's going to be a song called In the End by, uh, Lincoln Park. Okay. Anyway, oh, yeah. 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 And there's like a singing and rapping part in it. So let's go. Kind of going back and forth with that on stage during Luke's part. So it's going to be pretty rad. Hmm. And the outfit is going to be way more flashy than the first. <laughs> That's just how I roll. And oh, dude, stage makeup too. Oh my gosh. It's going to be a move. It's going to be a move. I'm still going to have the same face stripes and stuff. Okay. But like, I had an idea of like my eyeliner, like getting it like. Super like thick under there. And, oh, like, the point come down on one. Gosh, and then like I don't know. There's some some like super just sick and out there. Well, don't spoil too much, bro. You guys gotta get your tickets. Link below. Get your tickets. Okay. Butterfly Effect Show. Ethan McCone, Bella Girl, Christian Teeler, me. It doesn't get better than that. What and are you your doing? Owner is Mumble Diablo. So. Get your tickets. We confuse on why you ain't getting tickets. Why you ain't <laughs> Shameless plug, but it'll be fun though. Yeah, for real. And it's at the Hoosier Dome. Like Hoosier Dome is awesome. And it'll be a move and a half. For real, it's gonna be awesome. Delaney and Kelsey are coming. Do you think you'll be nervous again? No, I honestly wasn't nervous going on stage. Like at Coffee House, I was shaking. Yeah. But then when I went on stage at Hoosier Jam, I was just like, whatever. I was Let's like, do it. This is. Amazing. Yeah. I was like, I have the coolest job in the world. <laughs> it was it was just electrifying, like getting up on stage. It's like I did not want to get up. I wanted to get back up there and like just kill it again because it went well for like a first show and yeah, it was just amazing. Like just the feeling was just so like electrifying. Like as soon as I got on that stage felt like just electricity came up through the floor into my body and I was like I'm alive you know here we go <laughs> you know like my nerves were just gone like I wasn't Dude. nervous at all that's how you do it only thing though I ran out of breath a lot <laughs> and yeah I need to fix that cause cardio for real telling you bro it's crazy 
start running now. Dog, I like did this thing the other day. I was telling like my mom and dad about it. Like I did a cold shower for the first time. Ooh. I never do. I've never no. I've never done a cold shower before. Oh, they're so nice. It's torture. You don't like cold showers. I do cold showers after like I skate and stuff. Like if I have like a heavy heavy skate shower. Now are you meaning like, like cold and warm, like corm no. or like cold. ice cold? Oh, ice cold. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I've taken like a, I think I've taken like an ice cold shower once, but I was just like I was burning up, so I was like. <sighs> so like I guess it's a, um, Nay was saying something about it. She said it's like hydrotherapy. Shout out to Nay, I love you. Um, oh. So <laughs> it's this thing where anything to train your mind with, you have to go through like using water with it because then it affects your brain so quickly like so like you know how like you um you know that motivational thing by will smith where he's talking about skydiving and he's mm-hmm. talking about how when they count from three to two to one they, they push it two because you'll hold back at one yeah so it's kind of that like you're not gonna uh, okay. you're not gonna hold back you're just gonna go so that's what i did i just kind went of tricking you like, yes exactly okay i just jumped in bro it's bad <laughs> like it sucks Dude, it is so like it's gonna sound so stupid. It is so cold, like literally, like yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like literally, like I remember like my breathing pattern like switched up, and I was like, I was like, <sighs> like because it, dude, it freaks your body out. You're just like, it's like it's. I think it's borderline unhealthy if like you're in the wrong like state of mind or uh, if you're in the wrong physical health with your heart. Uh-huh. But the thing about it is like if you just like especially for like me and you like we're younger, so like we don't have to worry about like heart attacks as much. Oh, yeah. I feel. So, right. So like, I just went ahead and did it and like, dude, it, oh my gosh. And the rest of the day I was like, I want to tackle the world, bro. I was like, like yeah, dude, That's it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I didn't, I take cold showers. Like if I can run or something and I'm like super hot and then I take like, not like an ice cold shower, but like a cold, cold shower. Enough to like cool down. And yeah. Like, oh, that feels good. Yeah. It's like swimming after, uh, working out. Yes. Cause that's nice too. That's why shout out to hotels, bro. That's what I love. Like that is a vibe and a half. I do. Oh, we're going to Gallenberg. Mm. I called off. I got off. Bless. Bless. What is that? In like two weeks? Gallenberg weekend after this weekend, which is a thought and a half because that's going to be like. Dude, then that weekend after, that's my show. And we just got a series of stuff. Oh. Let's go. <laughs> and that's the thing, man. Like, I'm, I'm actually like, with Gallenberg, like, I'm so pumped. Me too. Because that's, and I think they said too, like, especially for like me and you, we can just like, we're going to split up. Good. Because like, I mean, you guys know how it is like with like parents and stuff. Like you travel with them, you love them to death, but it's like sometimes they go to some stores where you're just like, all right, can we go? <sighs> you know, like yep. you're looking at the same picture frame five times. Yeah, for real. <laughs> but no, like I'm, I'm pumped because I feel like me and you vlogging and stuff like that is going to be so fire. Yeah. Plus, it's going to be kind of like, we're breaking away. We're doing our own thing. Yeah. We can go hike because I want to hike for yeah. sure. I want to hike like a ton. I'll do that. Um, Fill up my stamina. Right, dude. See, we're getting prepared for the show. Boom. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like hiking, the place is vibey. So just like being there. Mm-hmm. I've been to Gatlinburg once, and that was yeah. Was I'm it a saying, was it a week? It was not. It was like a day. Uh, oh, because, okay. yeah. I was coming back from Florida in March. Dude, I think I've been there three times. Yeah, and I've stayed for I think the longest was like dang near almost a week and it was great so mm-hmm. we're going for a weekend though but yeah hey it's still gonna be rad oh dude yeah i want to check out the alcatraz museum that looks fun where's that at in there gallenberg oh <laughs> uh, just anywhere in there yeah I don't or know. somewhere in there it's somewhere in gallenberg okay there's just like a bunch of cool stuff there like they have like a bunch of artifacts from like criminals like they have like, oh. funny, Clyde, like documents and stuff interesting did yeah. you see robbie ha- finding those Oh, those pieces from yeah. that crash. Yeah, I saw that Yeah, so, okay. So, my, my older brother, he, like, found these artifacts with, um, I think, where was it at? It was some field in California. It was actually where the Durberger used to be. He took a picture of the spot where it used to be, and they don't have it there anymore. Oh. Uh, but he found artifacts of this old plane crash from, like, way back when. It was called um, Chuck Yeager. So, if you guys are, like, plane geeks. He crashed the F-104. It was in 63. And he found, like, legit artifacts. I'll put pictures up on the screen. Like, literally found them, like, just chilling there. And it's crazy to me because it's, like, I'm pretty sure, like, if I'm not mistaken, this might have been a 
and correct me if I'm wrong, this might be a place where you can't go, like, usually. But since he's in the Air Force and stuff, he gets, uh, like, access. Oh, that's rad. So, like, yeah. like, And it's nuts because it's, like, dude, like, like you were saying, like, the Alcatraz thing. Like, historic stuff. Like, yeah. Were, were you like me where, like, when you were a kid, that stuff was so boring? And then you grow up and you're like, yo, yep. low-key, though? Okay, yeah, I'm cool. like, okay, that's all right. It's <laughs> like, there's a lot of history behind this. Right. Like, how old it is and stuff. Like, yeah. old cars, dude. It's like, bro, what have you been through? That's what I'm saying. Like, I think, oh, what was it? I was at the state fair, and me and Whitney saw a, um, Whitney's my sister, by the way, if you guys don't know, shout out to her, she's out there, um, I love you as well, but we were talking about this chicken and waffle stand, and she was like, you do know how chicken and waffles started, right? And I was like, no, nah, like, I don't, <laughs> and she, and it's, it's like the history thing, like, she was telling me this crazy thing about how, like, jazz players, since they'd play, like, throughout the night, they'd be so tired that when, by the time they were done, it'd be, like, four in the morning. So they'd order and they'd be like, yeah, we're right, we're not really like open for breakfast breakfast yet, but like we've got some chicken. And he was like, bro, what if I just, I, I forget who the jazz player was, but he was like, dude, we should like mix the two. And I was like, that's kind of legendary. And like, I don't know. I think about stuff like that and I'm like, bro, if jazz didn't exist. We wouldn't have chicken and waffles. Right. And Or like furthermore, like if, if like the person that made like the sax or anything like that, like jazz wouldn't have existed and then chicken and waffles wouldn't have existed and then that stand at the state fair wouldn't exist so the person working in the stand wouldn't have that job it's just like holy crap chain of events have you had the new mac and cheese at Chipotle yep you like it it's rich that's like pristine quality you know what I did huh I took the uh, I took chicken nuggets like the nuggets from Chipotle yeah broke them down mixed it in there oh it is so good because they don't do it like they don't put chicken In the mac and cheese. Like, I had it, and it was really good, but I was like, this would be better if they had a chicken in it. Bro. Ordered an eight count, threw it in there, and now I'm going to eat it for lunch tomorrow. <laughs> You're a genius. Oh, my gosh. What's... Oh, dude. I'm sorry. Like, I will advocate for it forever. Hot Cheetos cream cheese, bro. For real. That's so slept on. It's... It's amazing. And, like, and I'll, tell, like I'll tell, like, my coworkers, I'll tell my homies, and they're like... Oh, no, 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 yeah, man, that's not... That. Like, yeah. Because you got me hooked on it. I'm like, bro. It's fire. Did they give you that stank look? Like, like, no, that's what? cool. And I'm like, it's fire. Yeah. And try it. Like, I get it. It's like walking up to somebody and being like, hey, you ever drink orange juice after you brush your teeth? Because that's fire. And they're just like, what? Uh, but please, like... A sour, more sour taste. <laughs> but this one, this this combo, oh my gosh. It's good. Dude, shout out to the janitor that made hot Cheetos. Which, that's another crazy story, too, like, historically, I think. Yeah. Dude was literally, like, um... Because I know he was, like, a Mexican guy that was, like, yo, we use this kind of, like, powders. Like, I think it was, like, chili powder. Yeah. He's, like, we use this stuff at home all the time, so what do I put these on Cheetos? And then, boom. Million, no, billion dollar idea, easily. Now he's a freaking billionaire. He better be. He better be. Better not be a janitor still or else. you are still mopping floors out there, dude, I hope you're eating hot Cheetos and you get paid for every Cheeto you eat. Agreed. If I had something like that, I'd still be a janitor. Mm -hmm. I'd just be happy and be like, yeah, I got a lot of money, but I'm still a janitor. I'm chilling. I invented hot Cheetos. It's good. Right. I feel like uh, Keanu Reeves, like he still like rides the bus and stuff. Yeah. Although there's a thing though that I heard that was like, it was talking about, because you know how people say like, oh, if I had a million dollars, I would like give to the poor and like do this and that and they're like oh, I just I just give it to everybody and it's yeah. like yeah but would you yeah because like, would you though there was a financial buy a bunch of shit. <laughs> dude right like there was a guy um he I forget who it was but they were like a financial person so they were big on it he was like the thing that you would do with a million dollars he was like what would you do with it you would do the same thing you're doing with the income you have now and I was like yeah. paying for your bills paying for your cars your meaningless stuff boom <laughs> And it's like, would you give though? Because you ain't giving now, or are you giving now? You know, it's yeah, like it's like if you had the money, but you do have some of it. So it's like, I had a thought today about um, like just being present. Mm-hmm. I gotta find it because it was in my notes. Because like, do you ever jot down stuff that just pops in your head? Yes. Okay. Thank God. A lot of it is ADHD thoughts, but. <laughs> Most of them are like, but it happens. Just weird. Uh, one was like liquid zoo equals aquarium. It's one of my notes. Oh, an aquarium is a liquid zoo. That's deep. Big old deep. So deep. Big deep. World's big. So the thing is, is like, you essentially only have like, okay, we're worried about a future that we don't have, but we're living in a present that we can alter, like due to our decisions. 
So whatever future that you want, you can really decide. We just yeah. have too many factors coming in. Like, I saw this thing about how our brain is just a filter. Like, you can, like, literally, like, half the time you have a bad day, it's usually because people are treating you bad. Mm. Or it's because, like, something didn't go the way you thought it would or whatever. But really, it's up to how you're processing it. It's like, you can really get, like, like today, like, I went to work and, like, it was, like, at, at best mediocre. Like, nothing ex- exponentially positive happened. Nothing was too great. It was just, yeah. like, meh. Like, you know. Yeah, that's what school is. Today. And, it's just, right, it's just, like, a meh day. But, but I'm still positive. That's what I'm saying. I, How, I feel like, honestly, like, half the things that people complain about, it's just all about process and, like, your mind. Yeah. Like, I get it. If you're complaining about, like, a loss in your family or, like, something crazy like that, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it's like, okay, you're good, but it's like, if someone's like, oh, the betting machine today and didn't drop my bunions out, now I'm out two dollars, and it's like, bro, you're fine. There was a, there was a lady today, um, she was in toys, and she asked me a question, and preface, I work at Target still. So it's a, it's a lot of retail struggle. It's like if you guys work in retail, you know this. You know the struggle. And if you're one of my coworkers watching this, you really know the struggle. But there was a lady that was telling me about how, and she was kind of like bitter and complaining. But she was like, "Hey, I just wanted to know what the price of this toy was." And I was like, "Yeah, of course." And so I scanned it. And I told her, and it was like twenty bucks. And she was like, "That's when she started snapping." She was like, "Well, I went up to get service, and it was, and I think she said it was like she got like two bucks back each." And, like, I get it, like, getting two bucks each versus $20 each is, like, a pretty exponential difference. Yeah. But in my mind, I was, like, but, like, this is what she said. She said, like, okay, so I, she was, like, I was at a baby shower, and, like, that's how I got it. It was a gift. And she was, like, I got too many, but we already have one at home, so I was returning the two. And I literally got $4, and they're both worth 20 bucks, so I should have got 40 And I was, like, okay. And, like, I got the, the, the like, the, the problem with it, but my thing was, like, why are you bitter? Why are, yeah, why are you so bitter? Because, like, you at least got those things out of your hand. You technically just made four bucks. Yeah. You or, didn't lose any money. Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. And it's like, I get it. You could have made 40, and you're about to, because we're going to probably have to do it for you. But, like, you could have, you know, it's like, I don't know. There's just something in me that's like... I think you could look at it like, oh, dang, I got scammed out of, you know, 30, I'm bad at math. I feel like 90% of the things that people let the, let ruin their day are, like, the most stupid things on the face of the planet. Yeah. Like, if I'm having a good day and then, like, I trip and fall and people look at me like, okay. For real. Like, I'm going to let that day continue being good because that's, uh, it's up to me. I'd laugh. Like, I'd laugh at myself when I fell. I'd be like, yeah. like oh. <laughs> whatever. Anyway. Like, this is how I roll. Like, it's how my ADHD is. It's like, you know, something bad happens. Like, if, like, or not, like, bad, but, like. You know, some unfortunate, like, if I fall or something, or, like, act like an idiot downtown or something, you know? Yeah. I just laugh about it. Right. It's, it's, like, it's fun to laugh when you're sad, and it's good to laugh when you're sad. And well, and, and, like, in my mind, I try to remind myself that, like, at the end of the day, it's, like, no one's going to really, like, hold that against you. Yeah, it's, like... Even if they do, it's their problem, not yours. Like, I'm not going to see these people ever again. Yeah. It's like, yeah and if you do, whatever. Whatever. They'll be like, oh, that's the guy that danced in front of cars downtown. I'm like, hey... I don't care. Right. I well, mean. dude, like getting made fun of in high school, like my thought process too was like, like you ever notice that like people that are solidified and like bold in themselves, they never make fun of people. So it's like real realistically, the only times you're being made fun of is by people that are insecure about themselves. Yeah. So you're like, oh, you're really putting yourself out there because yeah. now I know that you're insecure yourself. Exactly. Like I clown on people, but I don't bully them to the point to where like I make mm-hmm. fun of them. Like I'll just like crack like a joke or something and but it's like a friend thing yeah it's like a friendly thing you know it's like i'm not trying to be mean i'm just trying to you know well and plus like the people that do it they're actually trying to be mean they're actually trying to hit you in some way yeah mentally because they they genuinely mean it and you can tell it's from their heart and you're like really franklin central (laughs) low key just saying high key i will (laughs) yeah it, I never thought that it'd be true that, like, certain high schools are good and others are bad, but, like, yeah. Franklin Central was honestly the worst experience of my life. Me too. So. I went there for four days. <laughs> yeah. Four days at Franklin Central. Absolutely hated it. And it's, like, it's a, it's a mix of the, the people and the staff, and it's, like, and then, but, like, bro, like, like, if you guys are local, like, you'll understand this whole battle. Like, Southport, though, 
Um, For real? Like, I got a friend at work that said that she hated it at Southport, but I was like, bro, I loved it there. It was probably just the people you graduated with. That's honestly. what I was saying. And, like, that's what it makes it. And we got, like, the incoming freshmen are nice, they're chill, and some of them are in theater. Uh, Mikey. Shout out to Mikey. You're my favorite freshman. <laughs> um, the man. The man, Mikey. He's probably killing it right now. Oh, he is. He's a legend. But it's just, it's the people that make it nice. And it's like, if the kids are nice to the staff, then the staff's going to be nice. And I just feel like everybody at FC, they're just, their noses are in the air. They're so up there and they think they're better than everybody. And that's why staff gets treated like shit. So... Yeah. Staff comes back, <laughs> and it's like it just makes the whole place not fun. And it's like, it's interesting to me when I hear people saying that like they love it there, and it's yeah, like it's like because you grew up around it and you don't really see the damage that's being caused. I thought maybe like for like the slightest second, like my second day, I was like maybe I could be like a little spark of positivity here. Maybe I could start something. Nope, nope, and it's hard because it's like how come just because like mainly i don't really know anybody there oh so and you can't weasel in yeah okay it's kind of hard to just be positive when which is hilarious you don't know there and you're like a ghost yeah so it's like they don't like it there maybe it's like a lack of opening on their side yeah and there are some people there that are really cool mm-hmm. like there's like a select few people that are that i genuinely like men are genuinely good people but it's like people man well like and you honestly like the thing is too is you didn't even go in with the mindset of i want to make friends with a bunch of people here Mm -hmm. it was like i'm just here to like keep going yeah but the vibe was literally so bad that even though your main objective wasn't the thing that let you down it still affected you negatively it was just like i didn't have a lot of pressure on me there but it felt the vibe there felt like eating sand and like being closed in. And it's like, oh my God. That was my life. I just want to forget out. Three and a half years. No, I'm sorry. Seven and a half? Because I went to the middle school too. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah. Oh gosh. That, yeah, I didn't even go to the middle school. I came from Southport. Mm. Then I went back to Southport because... Southport's where it's at. I love Southport. I don't care. I'm just going to say this now. I don't care what the statistics are at FC. I don't care what place they are in the state or the world. Southport is better. It's so true. Even though that's not statistically. Everybody there is a family. Everybody there is nice. They treat everybody with respect, which is what you guys lack. I'm not dissing Franklin, but I kind of am. You guys misspelled your name on your handbook, printed out 3,000 of those to the school. How dumb can you get? It's true. I'm going off. (laughs) You guys need to act like human beings. Act like human beings. Get your head out of your asses. Get your nose out of the air. Be a decent human. You're not Batman. Rant over. (laughs) And no college cares that you went to FC. Exactly. Thanks for coming to our TED Talk. (laughs) Nevertheless, though... Southport is just F- F- FC is FC is, is 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 definitely a struggle. It is people there. There, shout out to the people that are there that are cool and human beings. For real. Um, but yeah, like Mr. Simmons, shout out Mr. Simmons. Bro, shout out Mr. Simmons. Love you, Mr. Simmons. <laughs> You're the man. Um, no, but like, oh my gosh, dude! If anybody's watching this and still going to high school, keep going. It's I know it's difficult, but like it's for real. I'm in my junior year, and I think I'm doing it. It's so easy. Now that I've like, honestly, like really found myself most for the most part. Like I obviously I'm still finding myself. I mean, I'm only 16, but like we're always a work in progress. Yeah, when I found myself for the most part, it's kind of like who I am and who I want to be. It just it gets so much easier because you don't have so many things running through your mind. You don't have so many things at focus. It's like hmm. you know when you're a freshman and a sophomore and stuff, and even a junior, you're just kind of like, oh, I wonder what I can do for this and then this and this and this and this person and them, and it's like. All of it just kind of rushes your mind at once and it makes things hard. And I just kind of realized that stuff isn't really as important. And it's like, you know, I'm just kind of here to get in and get out. But yet I have accumulated a nice little family there. And I love everyone there. And they're just amazing people. And they make high school better than it is. And that's how a high school should feel. <laughs> like home. Like it shouldn't just be like, 
a torture chamber for your mind. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> I was watching the uh so Captain Underpants did a uh, a show and I watched it on Netflix like the first episode and they were in trouble with Mr. Krupp. Oh. And he was like they were like so they made a comic and they were making fun of the gym teacher, right? And like the gym teacher's in the office with him while he's yelling at him and he's like you guys made a comic, and they're like, "Yeah, we just wanted to think of ideas." And the, the literally the the line of the uh, not the janitor, but the uh, the principal. He goes, "You can't think. This is school." And I was like, "Yes, bro." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Dog, if that ain't ninety percent of the school system nowadays, Franklin. like, bro, not even just Franklin, like, just like the school system, like, Real. probably parts of Southport, probably parts of every other place. Oh yeah, it's just like everywhere, like the 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 um." The level of absurdity in how they treat kids nowadays as lab rats to, like, cycle into the system is, like, ridiculously offensive. Oh, for real. And, like, crazy. It's, like... And I and it's, like, when we get first-hand experience, they cannot deny that. It's, like, we're people. We're not numbers. Yeah. And that is kind of the school system sometimes in Southport. Like, I love Southport, but, like, their school system is... It's, it's a good school system. It's just we're numbers. There's just problems with everything, though. And that's, like a, that's at every school, though. But that's the thing, man. Like, at the end of the day, like, when you find... Like, you can find as many issues as you want, or you can find as many positives as you want. Yeah. It's up to you. Like, FC, like, they have a really good, you know, like, show choir program. They've got blah, blah, blah. So you could look for things that are good, but it's like when the bad always the good, that's when you're like, gotta yeah. go. And so that's why I love. The good always the bad at all. That's true, bro. It's just... It's hard to outweigh bad with good when there's very little good to work with. Yeah. It's kind of like... It's true. I don't know. I'm trying to think of something. <laughs> like, I'm trying to think of something to, like, compare it to. It's like, imagine you're given, like, a project and you have, like, a deadline and it's tomorrow and they give you, like, so much material to work with. It's like, I can't use it. You're like... It's like, ah. Uh, yeah. It's kind of... That was a little confusing, but it's just... No, I, I followed. Yeah. I get it. But nevertheless, dude, you're here. Yeah. You're alive. Way better off. For real. You're free. <laughs> yeah. I'm free. I'm a survivor. Dude, right? <laughs> I'm a survivor. I'm doing good. I'm happy. I got my life in check. Tatooine end of the year. Tatooine, bro. You already know? Tata- okay, so Tatooine at the end of the year, Tata- September 6th. Who's your dome? Butterfly Effect. What is Butterfly Effect show? Yes. Okay. Butterfly Effect show. Um, dude, Gatlinburg vlogs. Low what? key though, bro. Smokey Joe's two. Like Smokey Joe's two music video. Oh, who are we talking about? <laughs> Give you a sample of that shot. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. Oh, I saw him today. I should have. Ah, oh, okay, guys. We're gonna cut it here though. Um, I hope you guys. If you guys stuck through the whole thing, I really appreciate you, Lefty. I know you did, bro. You're the man. Uh, <laughs> but nevertheless, guys. Um, I don't know if you did, Delaney, but I hope you did. You're real too. If you made it this far. <laughs> um. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, Drop a like. Let us know what you thought. And um, yeah. Yeah, guys. Keep going. Keep I can't even talk. Dream chasing. I'm Capital Jack Jackson, whatever you want to call me. Thank you for being on the show, sir. Thank you for having me, sir. Appreciate the... uh, I'm going to go do a business. Me too, man. Let's do this. (laughs) (laughs) Forget normal outros. (laughs) For real.